It's a simple statement. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And so there are things that are our responsibility that no one else is going to do, that we have to do, and a part that we have to do is bear with people in love and endeavor to keep the unity of the Holy Spirit through the bond of peace. Not always looking for violence, not always looking for retaliation, not always looking to win every confrontation, not always looking to have our way, learning how to keep our sword sheathed in the middle of conflict, learning how to turn the other cheek on people, learning how to pray for our enemies. See, I'm just, I'm saying a bunch of stuff that we know Jesus said, but we don't ever really like to teach it. And we don't really like to walk into it because it's a lot tougher to live that than it is to just say, hey, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Don't judge me. I can do whatever I want. See, that one's the fun one. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Don't judge me. I can do whatever I want. And the tough one is turn your cheeks so the enemy can hit it twice. Pick up the load and carry it two miles. Give a cup of cold water in his name. Keep your sword in its sheath when somebody pulls one on you. Don't retaliate. Don't give an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Don't pay back Cain seven or Lamech 70 fold. Love the adulterous woman. Care for the man who's, who's a leper and hug him and love him and give of yourself towards him. And this isn't just preaching the principle of Jesus. It's walking out of heaven. It's walking the heaven out that you know has been deposited in you. Colossians 1. Let me show you one more of the Apostle Paul and we'll bring you back to an Old Testament passage that I think will help clear it up. Colossians 1, 9. For this reason also, I'm sorry, for, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Have you ever wondered why Paul constantly prays for you to have the wisdom of God? Why do you need the wisdom of God? Because there are things you need to be doing on the earth. Hear that. There are things you need to be doing on the earth that take the wisdom of heaven to do them. It's not about just learning what Jesus did and then doing nothing but reveling in it. If we're not careful, the grace community becomes a place where we pat one another on the back for being God's righteousness and not a place where we use the wisdom placed inside of us to go out into a darkened world that needs someone in that world, someone helping show the way. And so we have wisdom and spiritual understanding, Tenton, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Notice that passage that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him. The word Him is italicized. It's not in the original Greek. That pronoun gets dropped. What Paul, closer to what Paul says in the Greek is that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing. So it's not just about fully pleasing Him. There's just a general statement of what it would look like, how aesthetically, visually, spiritually, mentally pleasing it would look to see someone walk worthy of who they really are. There's something about seeing someone live up to what we hope they'll be, isn't there? We do it with our sports stars and our movie stars all the time, even when we don't realize we're doing it. I watched, I don't know how many of you watched Albert Pujols returned to Bush Stadium this weekend. Okay, that got applause. Okay, good, good. Okay, so Albert Pujols comes back to Bush Stadium this weekend, and there was this real, there, I think most people thought there'd be applause, but there was this kind of underpinning of, of news media and fans that were like, ooh, what if they boo? And I thought, no, Cardinal fans aren't going to boo. They're, they're not going to boo somebody that did what he did here, so they're going to live up to that mantra of best fans in baseball. And, and so I watched that, and then Pujols hits that home run yesterday, and the stadium goes nuts as if he's a cardinal. And that one gave me chills. That made the hair on the back of my neck stand up because he gets to the dugout, and they give, he gives a curtain call. They, they cheer a visiting player out of the dugout to give a curtain call. And when he goes to the plate, you got Yachty Molina going out front and giving him a big wide berth so that he can stand at the plate and get cheered for. And as I watched all that, I thought, oh, that's that's. And this, is, this relates to what I'm saying here. That's aesthetically pleasing. It's what we hope our heroes will do. It's what we hope people that have a title over their name will live up to. Like, that people will be what we want them to be. 
And what if it goes the other way? Like, what if he comes up and everyone boos, and his response to it is super negative, and all of that goes on screen, and you're home watching it, and you get this bad feeling. Now, I know I'm using, I'm using a uh, cardinal analogy because I'm in cardinal country, and you're safe using cardinal analogies. This won't play as well over the rest of the world when they hear this message. I might have to edit it out. They won't know what I'm talking about. But for this room, it works pretty good to go, there's something about seeing someone who you believe in be what you believe in. And I think it's what Paul says. Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing. Drop the hymn, because it's not about God's displeased and then God's pleased, God's displeased. No, it's not a pronoun specific statement. It's walk in a way that is aesthetically pleasing to those who watch kings walk. Because they're watching the sons of God on the earth. You've been bragging about your liberty and you've been bragging about your freedom. Walk in a way that makes people on the outside look in and go, he's right. He might be one of the sons of God. She might be one of the daughters of God because only one of the sons of God would have done that. Only one of the daughters of God would have said that. Only one of God's kids would have responded that way. Otherwise, they're a child of the devil. You want to know what the devil looks like? Watch how this guy treats his neighbor. Watch how this guy responds to adversity. Watch how lazy this guy is when something needs done. Watch how hopeless this situation is rather than watch the sons of God step up. 